If we look at Omni Channel, for sure, uh, no brand today can not move to Omni Channel because that gives a great advantage to the customer and the customer service that we are looking for. In fact, if we look at uh, earlier times, when a customer used to walk into the store and he wouldn't find his size or the color that he wanted, he would normally turn away. However, today, because of Omni Channel, when a customer walks into the store, whether it's a he or a she, and if they don't find their uh, product that they want, whether it's a color or size or any other product, we ensure that this will this can get home delivered to the customer or wherever in the country the customer wants that product to be delivered, we deliver it there. So it's a great advantage that a uh, lot of retailers are uh, experiencing. We also have the same kind of uh, thought process. However, having said that, Omni Channel does have its own challenges. I am 100% sure, but in some time, those challenges will also get ironed out. And we are looking at a growth in Omni Channel and otherwise also in online as well as offline. The customer behavior is changing significantly and it has changed over a period of last four to five years. It has got a big push during the pandemic also. So what we see is now there are two types of customers. A, the life expectancy in the country is increasing. That means people are living longer. And if they are living longer, mm -hmm. even after the retirement, they need to continue to work so that they are able to earn money to sustain their lifestyle. That also automatically means that they have more disposable income that they want to spend on brands, on retail, on the things that they enjoy. So that gives a different kind of uh, or a certain kind of uh, new customer base to us, which earlier was uh, supposed to die down uh, after retirement age. But now that is increasing. On the other hand, we have millennials. Millennials are exposed to internet, they're exposed to information. Even before they want to buy something, they research about the products, about the brands very well. And when they do it, after that, they choose whether they want to buy online or offline. There are certain uh, customers who would like to buy from both the channels, whether online or offline. Especially after the pandemic, if you see, initially during the period of pandemic, customers used to buy online because they were not able to go out and buy physically from their stores. However, after the pandemic, we see a lot of customers are coming back to the physical stores. They see that they want to socialize. They want to eat out. They want to do the shopping and get the complete experience of physical shopping. Both these things are giving great advantage to the brands and the retailers. And we see growth in both the segments, whether offline or online. And I personally believe that this growth is likely to continue at least for the next two to three years because the consumption itself has gone up. So we're very happy about this uh, currently. We have realized that offline and online are two extremely important channels. They are not competing with each other, but they are complementing each other. Given this fact, what we are doing is that we are also expanding and uh, upgrading our offline experience. So what we are doing now in case of offline, we are opening bigger and better boutiques. We are premiumizing our products also, and we are premiumizing the brand itself. So this is about the offline. In case of online also, we recognize the fact that this is the future. So in online also, we are expanding. We will be joining hands with some select third party marketplaces also in this current year. And our aim is to expand our contribution of online sales in the next four to five years to a bigger chunk as compared to today. So this is a big challenge indeed. So when I say that the post COVID, uh, the sales are increasing, the customers are coming back to online as well as offline stores. So obviously, all the retailers and we as a brand are also uh, seeing a serious uh, uptick in the sales. Our sales are better than the pre-COVID levels also. However, having said that, as you rightly mentioned, the costs are really going through the roof, whether it is cost of raw material or whether it is transportation cost, in, especially when we are importing stuff from outside, the logistics costs have really gone through the roof and that is biting the margins. So our margins have seriously declined. However, being an optimistic uh, retailer and coming from a brand like Lacoste, we do believe that these are the phases. This phase will also go away in certain time. During that period, obviously the gross margins will uh, get hit. But over a long period of time, 
and which long period will not go beyond this year is my belief. We think that everything will come back to normal and the sales will go up, uh, the growth will come uh, from the top line and costs will also come back to the normal and then we should start earning money also.